you don't realize you're getting fried. What's up guys, welcome back to another Tackle Tip Tuesday. This Tuesday I'm gonna be talking about a little bit different swim bait. Uh, you know, I was rolling off a couple weeks ago around Christmas, uh, talking about the HUD, big swim baits. This is a little bit different technique. Uh, it's still a swim bait and still classifies as a swim bait. A lot of the big swim bait guys will say, no, it's not a swim bait, but it still gets big bites and it is still classified as a swim bait in my opinion. Um, but basically it is a uh, top water. It's a top water swim bait uh, and majority of the time It's gonna be a specific brand of soft plastic lure. Uh, you can try the other brands like Kytex and um, Reaction Innovations, whatever stuff like that, right? Uh, it just doesn't sound the same and It's just not quite you just don't get the same amount of bites on it like you would with this specific lure and that is the gambler big easy uh, it's a staple on the East Coast, especially down in Florida. Everybody freaking throws them this time of year. And, uh, well, this time of year for them, sorry. Coming up in the spring slash summer, that's when we can throw them, but not so much right now. They're killing them down there on, in Florida and on the East Coast, uh, Southern East Coast, I guess, on it right now. But uh, out here, we can't really throw it until that summer, springtime area. But basically what I'm talking about here looks like this so it comes in the package looking like like that it's a Florida company um, what does it say uh, Pompano Beach Florida where they're made but these lures right here um, basically the reason I would say stick with this one rather than go to a Kytec and stuff like that is because of the sound uh, it's got a unique design to where it kicks off a lot of sound and has a lot of body wobble um, in the water and it gives off kind of like a gurgling sound um, kind of like you know if you ever throw in like a whopper plopper compared to like a chapo or like a different brand one it kind of gives off a little bit different sound than the whopper plopper it's the same concept with this uh, these lures are they're they're just different and they get more bites um, I'm not sure why but I think it has something to do with that sound and uh, basically um, what I'm going to be talking about here is where I'm going to be throwing these lures, time of year, which I've already kind of talked about, how to rig them, and then my favorite colors. Uh, I kind of, I've known about this technique for a while, uh, actually for a pretty long time. I threw it in Texas a little bit, as well as Iowa, stuff like that, right? Getting a few bites in the Midwest, not so much, uh, nothing, or not so, nothing crazy, I should say. Uh, but I booked a trip a couple years ago, actually early this year in February, and went down to Florida, uh, where this technique is just, I mean, crazy well known, uh, with Captain Joey Berg, uh, with, he guides on Okeechobee. He's uh, that angler Joey on Instagram, so if you guys wanna check out his account and see the giant fish he catches down there, be my guest. But he, I would say he is a master at this lure. He, he knows when to give different retrievals with it, and to trigger these bass uh, to bite. So if you guys wanna know like how to throw this bait uh, from, in my opinion, the, the best of the best, you have to book a trip with him down in Florida. I'm just kinda giving you guys some information on how potentially you guys can catch fish out here on the West Coast with it and how I have caught fish out here on the West Coast with it. Uh, but anyways, let's get into kinda where I'm throwing these and when. Uh, I talked about already spring, uh, when the fish are moved up and spawning and kind of starting to roll into that post spawn is when I like to throw these 
Uh, wake baits really come into play this time of year as well. Uh, but these, it's like a buzz bait technically uh, around some really heavy grass is where I like to throw these. And these fish right during around that time frame when they're, you know, getting off the beds, they're freaking hungry and they're pissed off. So a lot of times you can get some really good bites on these. Yeah, they're gonna be skinny with big heads and stuff like that, but they're still big fish, you know? Uh, and I like to throw these where I can't throw other lures. Uh, really thick grass situations, uh, cause you'd be surprised the type of bites or where you get these bites from. I mean, you could be in some thick, thick vegetation and they're blowing up through it somehow and trying to get this thing. So maybe not highest in or penny warp or that stuff, but on the outside edges of it for sure. Uh, really thick hydrilla uh, and all kinds of stuff. So um, pond weed on Clear Lake, that's some of that stuff looks super thick, but those fish will blow up through it, no problem. Uh, another, well, one aspect of where this lure comes into play was kind of goes back to that cast catch Friday last week. That area where I caught that seven pounder in that video, I was there, what, a week, week or two before, catching some really good fish. I knew there was big ones around. Uh, had a couple shots on them and got a couple, missed a couple, stuff like that, right? On the Whopper Plopper though. And what the problem would happen was a week later, that time of year, the grass is growing so freaking fast that I couldn't even throw a Whopper Plopper there anymore within a week. The hooks were getting fouled up, everything, I just, it wasn't fishable. So I was, you know, gears were turning and I thought back to, you know, fishing in Florida with Joey Berg and I was like, dude, that'll freaking work. So picked up the Big Easy, and I got a couple small ones to go on it, and I was like, man, why, like, I'm getting these small ones, and there's a little bit of wind on the water. I was like, well, let's try and throw a bigger one, you know, and just get that little extra uh, commotion on the surface. Put on the, the big one, which is called the, it's not the Big Easy, it's the Jeezy, I think. Uh, it's the six and a half inch size rather than the five inch, I think, or whatever the Big Easy is. Uh, a little bit bigger profile, and it's in the, it was in the readier color, which, in my opinion, really looks good on Clear Lake. I think it, it gets bit really well on crew lake. I'm not sure what it Im in, or, uh, imitates. It might imitate a hitch a little better, I don't know. But it gets big ones to bite on crew lake for sure. Uh, and that's how I got that big one to bite in that video last week. But, uh, lost my train of thought here. With where to throw that lure, like I said before, it it's, excels in really thick grass situations. It's a Florida technique. There's so much vegetation down in Florida uh, that's kind of why this lure is, is as good as it is, you know what I mean? Uh, and that's why you fish it in those thick vegetation uh, situations. And it's also about reading the temperament of your fish, like I've said in previous videos. Uh, the, sometimes fish won't take a shot at, or they'll be short striking, stuff like that. Maybe that's why you, or that's when you switch to something else, um, like a frog or something like that, something a little bit slower, uh, where you can work it in one spot for longer. It all comes down to that. Uh, uh, just reading the temperament of your fish, but let's go into uh, Colors I really like to throw as well as how I rig it So like I said, this is a GZ size. It's a little bit bigger um, But this is also the Copperfield cover and this is one of my favorite colors to throw uh, When the Sun is up and there's not very much uh, cloud cover mainly because it has that real white bottom to it and A lot of guys will know when you're throwing top water in sunny days like a white does really well out here uh, in California it, it, I don't know if it just shows up better to the fish, but a white color will produce a lot more bites and sometimes some really big ones as well. Uh, but this copper field also has a lot of red and gold flake in it. And I think that it excels on the Delta with some of those golden shiners that are out there. Uh, and sometimes some gills uh, will give off some of that gold flash as well. Let's see here. Uh, another great color is gonna be, I don't have it right here, is the four to five O color. It's gonna be a black and red. Uh, black and red is a fantastic color for just big bites and in low light situations. Uh, even in, when the sun is up and it's bright blue skies, I've gotten some really big bites on black and red. It's just you don't get very many bites um, in those bright situations on that color. You may get the bite you're looking for, but maybe not as many bites in my opinion. Uh, another great color is gonna be Lunker Candy. This is a good color, just I think it has it has purple flake in it and a little bit of brownish, uh, tannish color in it. Uh, this color is great in the Delta, just imitating that gill or the bluegills and stuff like that. And then my last color I really like is going to be this reddier color, uh, which I don't really, oh here it is. 
this reddier color just because on Clear Lake, I think they really like this, like, it's like an olive green um, on the bottom with a darker green on top with some green flake in it. I love that color on Clear Lake, but um, for those colors, those will basically suit you for majority of your time periods. Yeah, there's a bunch of other colors on Gambler's uh, website and with the Big Easy that you can play around with, but those are the colors I kind of stick with. Might expand out and try some other colors later on, but those are the colors I mainly uh, work with. How I rig these baits, like I said, once again, this is a GZ, so it's a little bit different. Um, this one's going to be on a seven knot hook and it's Texas rigged. That's all it is. And you want to make sure that the hook isn't all the way out. It's kind of stuck in the flesh and it's uh, it's not tech exposed. It's just Texas rigged and tech exposed basically means you've got the hook out and exposed. Um, it's just writ when I'm saying just regular Texas rig, it's in the plastic still and just kind of if you push on it It'll poke out like that and that's kind of what you're looking for just because if you're throwing that really heavy grass If you have it tech exposed it can potentially come out and hook into some grass and get you all fouled up uh, With these GZ sizes a six and a half inch. I like throwing a seven knot hook on it uh, Just fits really well with the, the size of the bait and then with the regular Big Easy, I'm throwing a 4 aught or a 5 aught, uh, And that usually comes into play with if I'm getting short strikes uh, or if I'm missing fish. You know, if I'm, they're taking it down, they're hitting it hard, and I'm like, oh yeah, let them take it, let them take it, and then they, you hit them, and uh, you're missing them. It's like pulling loose. I might up to a 5 aught just to see if I can get a better hookup ratio. Uh, but that's just letting your fish tell you what they want, you know what I mean? Uh, with those hooks, don't throw them on a regular hook. You have to throw it on a super line if you're throwing it on braid, which I recommend because you're in heavy grass. It's it's almost like frog fishing. Uh, really heavy tackle, really heavy equipment. You have to throw that super line hook. Otherwise, you're going to lose fish. You're going to bend out hooks. So how I recommend that super line, super line hook. I recommend owner uh, hooks. This is I keep my hooks in the packages just because I don't really throw uh, too many of these seven knot hooks, I guess, with the Jeezy, uh, unless I'm worm fishing or something. But these are owner, uh, these are owner seven knots, and that's exactly what I'm looking for uh, to throw with these. Obviously, go to the four out of the five off. I'm throwing the regular Big Easy, but um, so those are the hooks for it. For equipment, I'm throwing it on. You guys have heard me talk about it before. It's a Florida technique. It's a Florida bait. You got to throw on a Florida rod, right? So Fitzgerald rods. It's a Florida company. Supporting them guys, those guys make fantastic grass fishing rods. Um, they're some of the best rods I've found for, I mean, just crazy tough on your equipment techniques. Frogging, punching, this technique, anything really heavy grass fishing, Fitzgerald rods will uh, take care of you. So I like to throw it on this, uh, oh geez, I'm gonna break it, 7.3 uh, meat or 7.3 heavy Stunner HD. Uh, once again, you guys have heard me talk about these rods before. I have like, I don't know, four or five of them just because I love them so much. It's my frog rod. It's basically my top order grass fishing rod. Like I love it. Uh, really stout rod. Never have any problems with the guides, none of that stuff. Uh, and I push them hard. Like I'm fishing in the summertime and this time of year, I beat these rods up. So uh, I like to pair it up with a fast gear ratio reel. And the reason that is, is it's just like, Kind of like frog fishing, but uh, it's a little bit different because a lot of times they'll blow up in a little bit more open water rather than in thick grass. So when they blow up and they, you hit them, they are moving. Oh my gosh, they move. I mean, especially the ones down in Florida, you hit them and they're already six feet to the right. And you're like, crap, you're trying to catch up to them and stuff like that. So you've got to have a fast gear ratio reel. I recommend having a little bit of an oversized handle on that reel, uh, mainly because you want to have something to really torque them in. Uh, you really, you have to turn the head on these fish, otherwise they're going to get off. Because uh, the minute you hook them and it's that big one, it's going to be kind of hard to turn their head, especially in some thick grass. So having that oversized handle helps. I like a Shimano Mantanium uh, with an aftermarket handle on it or a Tranks. A Tranks 200 uh, is a great reel for this uh, technique as well, just because they already have an oversized handle on it and you can get them in an 8 to 1 uh, gear ratio, which is suitable. Uh, I think I was throwing a Revo rocket on my last trip down in Florida, which by the way, I was trying to record this video down in Florida this week. Uh, unfortunately, I just didn't have time. I just, I mean, we just got back yesterday. I drove nine hours straight up, 
freaking flew out of Destin, then got back here, and then had to drive. I got home at like midnight the other night. I mean, I'm tired. Uh, so it's been a lot of traveling and not a lot of time to film stuff. So uh, really wanted to do it down there, but it's all good. Back here in California now, and gonna see if I can get on some more swim bait fish of the, the HUD caliber, I guess. But anyways, guys, uh, that's basically all I want to talk about. I think that basically sums it up. Yeah, I got my notes checked off. Sweet. Uh, once again, I appreciate you guys watching these videos. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. I'm gonna be doing a little cast to catch on some on the same technique, and then I might move on. I'll probably move on to another topic. Uh, but I, I really appreciate you guys watching these. Like I said, uh, if you guys like these videos, drop a comment below um, what you like about them. And if you hate these videos, drop a comment below. Let me know what you hate about them. I'm all about learning. I'm all about uh, trying to improve these videos for your guys' liking. Uh, and if you guys want to see more, uh, you know, press that uh, subscribe button and, uh, you know, subscribe to my channel. And you guys will hopefully get some information that uh, you guys need to get some big fish in the boat this year. So, all right, guys, I think that's it. So I'll see you on the next one. See ya.